board. Uh, we have six members present in the forum, so I'd like to open the meeting. First item on our agenda is to consider and approve the minutes of our previous meeting from October 19th, uh, 2010. Um, do I have any questions, comments, thoughts, or suggestions on the proposed minutes? Liza? I move to approve them. I have a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Eliza Quinn and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Um, the next item we have on the agenda is a consent agenda item, the Cottage Brook Subdivision Phasing Amendment. If the uh, applicant can step up to the podium and introduce themselves and ask, present what they were, they were looking for, we'll consider it. Skip Murray, who is also an owner. And uh, we have a uh, uh, phasing amendment before you um, requesting that we are allowed to move uh, our phasing. Um, and I think everybody got a package of uh, where we want to put the new lines. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Can you just give us a brief overview as to why you're, why you're looking for it? Uh, Why are you looking for the, phase, the change okay. in phasing? Um, originally, when we had uh, uh, come before you, we had split this up into smaller phases. From an economic uh, point of view, we wanted to uh, build phase one here, uh, which we have uh, done and completed. Uh, we have four homes being constructed along lots one through four now. Phase 1B was to go all the way out to here. Um, which is on the other side of lot 12. Um, due to the economics, uh, after discussion with the partners, we uh, decided to uh, approach you folks and see if we could uh, move phase two into here, which would be lots seven and 13. And then we're gonna concentrate on Franklin Circle. And then phase three would go out to where the original phase 1B was. Okay. Uh, and also at this time we had asked that the condominiums also be split into two phases four and five okay thank you all right this is a being a consent a consent agenda item if any board member wishes to move it to a substantive discussion to the regular agenda go ahead Elaine. I'd like to make a motion to move this to the regular agenda okay second it's okay um, a motion having been made by Elaine and seconded by Victoria. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion? Motion carries five to one. Maureen, is it, I, I've never had one move, moved off the regular agenda. Do we put that at the end or can we consider it now? Yeah, let's, I think we should just consider it now. So um, having heard that, does any of the board members want to weigh in on, on uh, the motion before us. Uh, I'd like to hear the applicant's response. I, we just received today around 4 o'clock a letter from Richard Bryant regarding the uh, limitations on dead-end roads. I don't know if you even had a chance to review this letter, um, but I'd like to hear your comment and if you could explain to us why this doesn't uh, create a, ma a maximum number of houses on a dead-end road that is above the maximum number of amount allowed by the ordinance and a longer dead end street than allowed by the ordinance. I understand you have not, you may not have seen this, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I did expect a letter from Mr. Bryan, so it didn't surprise me that it came at four o'clock today. Um, yeah, I will speak to you. Um, originally, uh, we started probably five years ago in the creation of this subdivision and we're uh, with engineers and the town, the town planners, to create a subdivision that um, had an entrance here, had another exit here into this neighboring uh, neighborhood here, which is Kildeer Road. Um, at that time, we were aware of the dead end uh, street provisions in the town of Cape Elizabeth that says, and I believe it's 2,000 feet and 20 homes. Correct. <clears throat> so, in the planning of this, um, that's why we had a second means out of the neighborhood. Um, and if you will see on your plan all the way down here in the Maxwell property, 
uh, when we designed the road, we had to design it right up in, to their border uh, for connectivity, to be able to, at some point in time, take this road and probably come back to Spurwink. Um, through the approval process, um, uh, actually Mr. Bryan himself wrote a referendum um, eliminating this as a second means of egress. Uh, it was voted on by the town, the residents of the town, and um, that referendum passed, meaning that this could only be uh, a gated exit. It can only be used by uh, fire, safety, police. Um, so then that created, uh, I, I believe, is a, a quite long dead-end road with emergency access out of here. Um, we've chosen to live with that, work with our engineers to create that. Um, and when we get to this point, we will have an emergency access. It will not be a truck entrance. Uh, passenger cars, it's not open for uh, transportation, it's just for uh, fire and safety. So if this, if this house were to be burning and a tree down here, a fire truck can come in this way. Um, I have not calculated, uh, I believe the number of homes right now is 14, depending on how you count uh, I don't think you count any of the houses down here, but I think there are 14 to this point right here. Um, so we're clearly going to go over 20 homes um, it, when this gets built. And I guess Trickery Way is the, um, the piece that makes that allowable, and I guess I may defer to Maureen on that. I have a question. So, but I think what Mr. Bryan is saying is if you build to the, to the top of the what is phase two? I, I don't right there. Right here. Is that two thousand feet from the end of the? I'm not uh, sure. It could be. I, I don't. I can't even see the scale here, so I'm. I'm not. And, and, and how many homes are in that stretch? I mean, Mr. Bryant's letter is not clear that he's saying um, that that's the case. Number one. Number two. This isn't the whole subdivision approval. You're still obligated to either build out or bond out the rest. This is just a phasing. So I, I, as I read this. The regulation, Elaine, it's, it's that we can't approve a subdivision with these parameters, but the approval is for the entire thing. This is just a construction phasing That's agreement. Right. So I'm, I'm not sure this even applies as a matter of law, and I'm not sure that the fact, I, I just don't know. I mean, is, is it 2,000 feet? Can you, is there any way to you uh, eyeball it? I don't it? have the actual. Excuse me, Peter. I think that battle was fought, uh, you know, during the approval process. No, I think it is. 20 and 2,000. Maureen, go ahead. If you don't mind, I can help No, that's fine. This. Please. Um, in the original Spurwink Woods approval, the <clears throat> applicant did present um, a map showing access from Mitchell Road and access from Spurwink Road and how far you could go in before you hit 2,000 feet and or 20 homes. And for the Mitchell Road access, it was pretty much halfway down Columbus Road. So okay. that's way over. And then for the um, Spurwink, Spurwink Ave access, you actually measure the dead end from the point where only one means of access exists, which would be the intersection. Right. Actually, Jim, it's a little further on. It's the intersection of Stevenson and Spurwink, because there's only one way in from that point. So if, down yes, here? That's right. Yeah. And if you count all the houses from that point, you hit 20 homes just as you cross the boundary into your project. Okay. So that's why the Spurwink Woods project had to have a second means of access. Um, the applicant actually purchased additional property in order to provide that second means of access. I remember. And um, that's why Chicory Way is, is the way it is. Um, the applicants were, were required to change their plans after the referendum was passed sure. and install an emergency access gate um, because the planning board um, strongly discourages emergency access gates for lots of connectivity reasons, and there was um, a clear uh, chance that once the, if there was any extension of this road into the Maxwell property, a second emergency access, access gate might have to be installed as well. That's why the gate ended up being on Chicory Way, to avoid the potential in the future for having the multiple emergency access gates installed. So the, the, when this project was approved, it was approved to meet 
the standard in the subdivision ordinance so that there are two means of access because you're allowed to count an emergency access road, which is what Chicory Way is going to be. But isn't, wouldn't the objection that Mr. Uh, Bryan is voicing right here be the same for the first phase as it was approved in the first place? Because if you're saying, so I mean, we've already approved it as a phasing. This isn't the ultimate build out. This is a phasing arrangement. Yes. Okay. And it's, you know, the, if, if Chicory Way was a through road, Mm. Um, there would be opportunities for the applicant to come in from different directions, meet in the middle, which was the approach that was used with Cross Hill. Sure. Because it's an emergency access road. There's only one way in. There's only one way in, and it's up to the planning board to decide whether or not the phasing plan has to meet this standard, because the, the, the subdivision plan the board has already found meets the dead end exactly. road standard and the act of recording the subdivision plan which has already happened conveys rights to the town for a right of way for this project so even if the applicant were to walk away tomorrow there are still rights that exist for the town to connect up whatever gets built to chicory way sure can so. can i ask you if i understood you correctly that when one counts the maximum 20 houses that would be permitted, you get to that before, before you get into the subdivision at all, or you get to it at the end of lot four? You pretty much get to it when you, when you start the subdivision. I don't have the plan in front of me. For the access from Spurwink Ave, you run out of homes before you run out of length of road. So the standard is 2,000 feet or 20 homes, whichever is less. And if you count, there are, there are homes on Stevenson, which is the access road that comes in off of Spurling. There are homes on South Street, which are on a dead end. There are all the homes in the Hamlin Street subdivision, which I'm thinking was 10 or 11 new lots. Cloutier's was 10. Pardon me? Michael Cloutier? Michael Cloutier's it was 10. Thank you. So, I, you know, if you figure out there was, there's 10 new homes there, plus there was um, a couple of other lots that Mr. Fustashi had. They were right at 20. Before was, anything happened. Before they, before they got any. So, so it, we're, we weren't viewed as a dead end road. I think that's. I, you. Or else it's the, the Spurwink Wood subdivision been, wasn't a dead end road because you had that emergency access in Chicory Way. You could not it have. It was a dead end road. We could not have built one house. And, and it, what I'm trying to get at was it inherent in the original approval of the subdivision plan and the phasing right. that the dead end standards do not have to be met e with each phase, yes. but that that road requirement applies to the completed subdivision. And from what you're saying. It sounds to me like that had to be inherent Absolutely. in the original approval of the project, in which case it seems to me that a change in this phasing line doesn't, doesn't that alter that legal situation and it, it hasn't been challenged in court or if it has, it's, it's up to this point or if it has been challenged and allowed to stand, then it's no longer an issue that we have to deal with that's on the table. I agree with that completely. Okay. Thank you. I agree with that. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Uh, who, who had the head up? Liza? I agree with Elaine's point. You had another? Uh, I have another Victoria, question, though. Okay, sure. Are we done with are we, this? Are we done this issue? Is anyone else? Okay, go ahead, Victoria. Um, I did have a question about the um, turnaround on, located on Lot 11. Mm -hmm. um, when I looked at this, I took out a highlighter and highlighted the phases so I could see them. And when I got to Chicory Way, I was highlighting it in such a way that I was excluding the turnaround. The turnaround? Do you see the turnaround on lot 11? Perhaps you can oh, explain oh, yeah. the status of lot 11 in the project. Is yeah. that part of phase three and, and it shouldn't, it should be. No, that, that actually should be included because that needs to be built. When we build the uh, trickery way, that, that will have to be built. Oh, and to my yeah. eyes, it appears that it's yeah. being excluded. And actually, uh, on mine it is as well. It's excluded. Okay, then I would want it yeah. to be clear that it's included in phase three. Yeah. Right. Excuse me. Okay. If, if whoever makes the motion for this project, you could include a condition that amends phase three to include the turnaround yeah. for lot 11. Okay. Just the turnaround and not the entirety of lot 11? 
construction? No, just that, that when, when Chicory Way is constructed, that turnaround has to be constructed as well. Right. Because there's going to be a gate there, and you need uh, an emergency vehicle has to be able to go in, turn around. If, if they don't have a key or a police, you have to have a um, hammerhead turnaround. Right. I think the only amendment, frankly, is the dotted line yeah. around the turnaround. It's, a, it's right. just a plan change. But that's fine. No, that's good to put, uh, to put in there. I think your intention was to build it that's as correct. part of phase three anyway. Yes. Victoria, are you all set? Yep, <clears throat> sir. Barbara, I think you had your hand up next. Well, I'm a little troubled. <laughs> I've always been troubled, you know that, but um, I don't read the standard quite the same way. Um, the, it says dead end road shall not be longer than 2,000 feet in length and shall not serve more than 20 minutes. That's both conditions, not one. In my reading, I don't ever remember amending it, but um, I, I'm a little concerned that 11 more houses might go in and there's only one access. And these roads are pretty tight in here, too, and I'm wondering if we shouldn't discuss that the rest of that road should be built with phase two. And I know, given that the economic situation is pretty grim right now, I know that. But I don't know. I, I'm concerned. And I may be the only one who is. Is is that a question for me, or is it? Well, it's it a, I, I guess it's just an opinion, or it's a, um, you know, you're certainly welcome, Jim, to respond. Um, go ahead. Did you want no, to? No, that's fine. You go ahead. <laughs> I, did, I just didn't know if it was directed at me or if you were talking. No, that's, about a, I'm fair, sorry. that's a fair question, Jim. I mean, Barbara, it doesn't trouble me so much. I mean, to me, phasing enables uh, both the town and the developer to be protected from half-baked, half-finished projects, meaning all the the money goes into infrastructure, but basically uh, the, the lots don't get sold. I mean, I think this is fairly modest in terms of what they're asking for. I mean, in, 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 the, in the worst case scenario, um, if it stops here, as Maureen said, this town still retains rights to finish um, the, the, at least the road through the trickery way. And one way to possibly um, sort of get the best of both worlds is to somehow bond out a through construction but allow the phasing to change. And Maureen, I don't know if that's something that would be, is that explicitly part of the applicant's proposal or is it? Um, Typically the benefit of a phasing plan is they only bond for the improvements that are in the phase. Right. So if, if you want them to go to Chicory Way, you need to include all of it in the phase, all the way to Chicory Way. Just to here. Well, yes. So you, you would basically have to say no to phase two and three. You'd have to just make them all one phase. Why is that, Maureen? Why couldn't they just build these lots and just put the street in? Under ordinance and in, in terms of good practice, you really don't want a developer, and I say this in the most respect possible, mucking around in an area where you don't already have a bond in place. Right. Because, I mean, there, there are some good examples in other towns where all a developer did was go ahead and clear the land and create um, a horrific erosion, erosion. control pro mm -hmm. problem okay. where the town doesn't have bonding in place to go ahead and stabilize it. So, you know, that's the whole idea of, of a bond is to financially provide the town with an opportunity to go in and fix problems if a developer does not perform. Okay. We, we can't cut a tree. Until, until we post a half a million dollar bond. I, and I think, uh, just speaking to your uh, question about extending all the way to Chicory Way, um, it, it is not a construction road for us. It's not a, a passable road by any of the people building homes, any of the people that live there now. It's a gated road. It's not usable. It's, it's, it's only benefit um, and we're happy to, I don't know, you probably have not been to the site, we lost about 80 or 100 trees on this, and we had to build uh, the basis of Chicory Way into the property already um, to remove them because it was a fire hazard. Mm -hmm. um, we're happy to put a, uh, a road so a fire truck can get in if the trees were down on the other side to, to get it to that point if that's, that's what, you know, would, would make you guys happy. But... We don't want to build a road that nobody can use. 
will eventually build a road, but it, it, you know, it doesn't seem to us that I don't think the people in the neighborhood, and, and you've got two different neighborhoods here, but um, would want us just opening it up and using it, you know, everybody going in and out. Meaning, meaning trickery way? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't believe... Meaning if you built it out so that a fire truck could get in there. I mean, you know, the concern is safety yep. on a temporary, on a phasing part of this. I'm more concerned about the bonding, and I don't okay. know which one's easier for the developer or better for the town or I don't know which one. Um, well, they just released our first bond that we had when we finished our first phase of construction. They did, and, and, you, and you're looking to post basically a smaller bond because you've got to phase it. And like I said, it's, and it's I, an economic, uh, I, I'm, I'm, economic time. I'm trying to encourage the responsible development, and if we can do that and accommodate fire safety concerns. That's what I'm looking for. And, um, uh, and, uh, Skip Murray is here, and if you had some questions <laughs> about that, uh, Skip is the uh, infrastructure king. <laughs> I see that the member of the public wants to uh, make a comment. So I'm, <clears throat> if you could step up to the microphone, tell us your name and address, and make your comments. I'm hoping for some insights. I'm Allison Darling, and I live at 35 Macaulay Road, which is right here. Okay. I've been involved in the process since it started, obviously, on the other side of Jim's desire. Um, when this first was approved, there was no discussion of phases. So I'm a little miffed as to why we're even discussing phase one, two, three, four, or five. When this was approved, it was the whole entire development. Perhaps you don't remember that. No, I do. I was on the board. I know you were. But my so I'm a little concerned as to why we're talking about phases. Because also, if you allow this development to go in without this road going all the way through... I'm, I'm sorry. Is, is that a question? I, I'm, I'm it's a comment. I mean, if you allow this to go through, again, back to Barbara's point, there really are some safety concerns as to how you're going to get a vehicle in there if there is a fire. Well, assuming you can't get in the only way presently. Exactly, because coming in this way, it's a rather roundabout way. So if you're going to approve this, it's, you need not, to put in the whole road. We're, we're not approving the construction. That's already been approved. This is just a question. Well, the whole development. And right. as part of the whole development, the whole development to me was this entire road. No, the phasing was originally part of the approval. Hold on a second. Originally part of the approval, it was part of what was approved, and it's a construction phasing and a bonding phasing. It's specifically allowed under the regulations. They're asking us to amend the phasing to, to, to basically break it out into smaller chunks. I respectfully disagree with that. No, the, phasing I can't. Was, the phasing was this was one thing, and then these were going to be No, that's, that's not correct. I mean, the, the phasing was part of the approval, and that's either in the record or not. But so you think I'll, there were five stages to the phasing when this was all approved? No, there wasn't. There isn't a think. It, 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 <clears> I understand there were three phases approved, correct? The, 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 the current approval is, has three right. phases. When did the current approval come to be? And I, I didn't know about that. Well, it was, send out notices every time? I, you know, I don't think. Apparently there was a planning session that I wasn't no. even the phasing is part of the original approval that was in this room when the project was approved. That there were five different phases? No. Three. 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 Uh, what, where is there five? They're asking. They're asking to go to five. Right. Actually, there was. Oh, no. There were was, phases, and then they broke phase one into phase 1A to do those four. Was it four or five lots? This is. The phasing plan has been amended a couple of times. But the current approval... I have come to every meeting. Every time I get a notice, I come to every meeting. Ma'am, if, if you would like to review our records, I, I can show you records of all the notices we've sent out. And you're direct about it to the project. I'm and, sure. And we have made a point of exceeding the legally required noticing for the project so that we make sure we send notices to every single butter. Plus, we've been posting all our agendas online. And just because it's posted doesn't mean I'm going to find it. Well, but I haven't received notice. I, I, think we need to, I, I think we need to focus on the merits of, right, of, so of the proposal. If Hold you're on. going to build this, there should be a road going all the way through for safety concerns. Okay. Thank you. 
Y'all set, ma'am? Y'all set? Okay. There's another per member of the public. If you could step up, state your name and address, and make your comments. Hi, my name is Susan Gilbert Hershon. I'm sorry, could you say? Susan Gilbert Hershon. Okay. I live at Dermot Drive. And I would like to thank Barbara for being very astute and worrying about the safety. And I want to know when the last time anybody has been down that street from Ham Stevenson, Hamlin, Dermot, into this new development. I would like to ask everybody when the last time that has happened. Okay. I mean, generally the procedure isn't that we respond to questions like that. I mean, if you think we need a site walk to take a look at what's going out there, you can ask the board for I that. Would ask, I would respectfully ask the board to please come to the neighborhood on a school day okay. at five minutes of eight and watch what goes on at a bus stop on a street that is less than 20 feet wide with no turnaround and a bus that comes through and the trucks that come through and the parents that are standing there guarding their children, and I would ask you to please come down to that neighborhood at 5 of 8 and see what our parents go through. We have 15 or 20 children now in that neighborhood since this project started, mm -hmm. all under the age of 10 years old. I, we are I'm, inundated with trucks. I, I, and I would also like to say that I want to thank the board, because I finally received a notice for the first time in years and I live on Dermot Drive, and I finally, after many emails between Maureen and I, received a notice, and I want to thank the board that that finally happened. Sure. So not always does a notice go out. So, ma'am, I'm yes. just curious to know how, when this um, subdivision is built out, how that will address your safety concerns, because I don't see an ideal place for a bus to turn around we once need this is another built out. Road and, um, and the other access is going to be gated. Yeah, and that's the problem. Therein lies the problem. You cannot have <coughs> development with 20-foot wide streets, lots of little kids, <coughs> and have one entrance and one exit into that neighborhood. It is a disaster waiting to happen. And it's very irresponsible. And I have told you this for years. And I really would hope that people would take a look at what we are going through in that neighborhood. It's not very pleasant. The trucks have been very respectful, but it is a very dangerous situation. And you live on, on Dermot? I'm on Dermot, okay. right okay. on the corner. Okay. And I would really urge and respectfully ask people to please go into that neighborhood at 5 of 8 and see if you want your children standing at the bus stop in the morning. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You can step up. Take your name out. My name is Steve Bromwich. I live on Hamlin Street going in there. Right. And so just a point of clarification on that point. And I think the issue, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I accept that the subdivision is coming and happening as the economy allows. And, you know, so that's not my point or agenda there. I think what Susan was referring to is just really the kind of traffic infrastructure there and how the increased volume of vehicles in that area is impacting it. And I, if, you, if you recall that entryway, it's, it's, it's kind of awkward and tight. Anyway. Uh, I remember. You come off Spur Wink, you have to, either a direction, you're making a short turn onto Stevenson, and then all the traffic has to make an immediate right turn into Hamlin. And the roads are very narrow there, and there's a lot of congestion. That is also, that area is also the place where the school bus stop is, and where all the vehicles and the traffic into the subdivision goes. And so there's now, you know, 10 or so more homes there, and there is on average 12 12 kids on the bus, which represents five or six families and cars and doing it. So that, so that moment in the morning, there's significant transition, uh, congestion, and if you're coming out of Hamlin Street onto Stevenson, cars have to stop and wait for any other vehicles to come through. It doesn't flow, traffic doesn't flow in two directions. So I guess my, my, my reason for being here and, and curiosity about the phasing issue is how that was going to affect revisiting the issue of a second entrance, I know there, there's a... It's not, it, it's not going to be a second means of in and out. Yeah, it's yeah, an I, emerg I understand that. emergency yeah. only. I understand that and appreciate that now. So I was, I, that's why I'm here, to educate myself. I wasn't sure, sure for all of the history. <laughs> and so... But and, I, and I was. My concern is, however the pr approvals and whatever traffic studies were done, mm -hmm. and whatever evaluation of the infrastructure and projections of how much vehicle traffic, and whether that intersection is in fact adequate, 
to my mind, as I watch that traffic and I see the close calls every morning, it's not adequate, sure. no matter what, what traffic study said. So my only concern and interest, and, and I was curious whether this impacted at all, is when and how the town and the planning board will continue to monitor that traffic situation, whether it has to do with the approach to South Street, whether that's ever finished, because that's a more direct angle. You know, you, then you have a straight shot into the neighborhood and then a, a direct one right turn into this expanding neighborhood and whether that's an option that's revisited at some point or that at some point the town considers or there's another, another, another referendum to make that more than a, a fire and emergency mm -hmm. access because currently the, the infrastructure is cutting it so when and how the town monitors that. I mean, my, my personal opinion was I didn't want the gate there in the first place yeah. but that, I, I lost that battle and frankly this is an approved subdivision so yeah. this will be built. The only, the only no question in front of us um, but I, I want to understand your point. The, the, the South Street access, upper left corner, Thanks. Yeah. is not connecting, no, South Street. Yeah. Is that not built out yet? No, no. So, the, so the issue is here, when you come in off oh, Spur Wing, is that going to be built? You, you, the, all traffic has to go through Hamlin Street. So, you tr so all, all traffic has to come in and stop here and turn here into the whole neighborhood. But I, this, this is a dirt road that's unfinished and it's blocked here. And, so and my, Maureen just reminded me of that is not going to be built out as part of this subdivision. No. Correct. And, that, and, and that's, that's, you know, the town approved for, for when and how does the town reevaluate that issue or any adjustments to anything on a public safety issue of that intersection? Well, that, that, that option would be beyond the planning board because that's private land at the end of South Street. And frankly, that's a town council issue, not, not something we would address. I mean, this is an approved subdivision. The only issue in no front of us right now is how to construct it in a, in a responsible way. Whether the South Street issue isn't going to be affected by what we do or not do tonight. Even, I mean, if we don't approve what the developer's asking for, they still are gonna move forward with the project just in a different yeah. timeline. Yeah. And, and uh, again, I'm trying to, uh, I mean, my personal goal is to get this the best for the town. And my experience, you know, being on these boards for years is that um, phasing generally helps the municipality as much as it helps the developer when done in a responsible way. I hear Barbara's concern completely that basically a second, mean of eager, you know, second means of getting in and out of there, even on a temporary basis, may be some way to protect both the town and the folks in the 11 lots that could be built as part of this new phasing arrangement, um, but at the same time allow the developer to, you know, to, to, to stagger the infrastructure improvements a little bit better. That's my inclination right now, but uh, if there's anyone else who wishes to speak on this very narrow issue, please step up to the microphone. Yes. Are you all set? Or? Yeah, no, I'll sit down. I, my, my goal isn't to hold Mike, uh, excuse me, Jim, or, or the, the council you know, hostage to the issue. It's more, when, this, when these notices came out, you see phasing, which affects when and how that road was finished, which was what caught attention. So yeah. my quick question to you is, how do we address the public safety and get the town to monitor that intersection? That's, Not here tonight, obviously, no. but when and how. I would either get in touch with uh, Maureen's suggestions. I, I, I've received comments from you and from Mrs. Hershon, and I have called the police chief and asked him to take a look at it. And he's been, and I've specifically told them that apparently there's a problem with mourning with the buses, and he's had police officers out there. And so far, I haven't heard that there's anything unusual that he, that he can address. You know, if people are parking on the side of the road in a way that's making things more dangerous. So, I mean, I've. I've, I've looked at it from what I have for tools available. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Barbara? I'd, I'd like to hear from Skip about I was gonna invite Skip making out. that into just a dirt, <laughs> yeah. you know, a passage so that we would have ingress and egress for emergencies. I, I'd rather see it open all the way. way but anyway, I told him I said I would speak next because I hear what Peter and you are saying, and I agree wholeheartedly. I think a way to to look at that would be to phase it the way that it's shown on the paper. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the cost that we're trying to, you know, phase out is a lot of the, the sewer, the water, the, the curbing, the pavement, um, under drains and storm drains. There's a lot of pipes in these roads. So if you phased it to the line that we've created, mm -hmm. I would have no problem adding some extra money in my bonding or, or part of my estimate that I have to give to OST and the town to be approved to create 
a gravel emergency gate like uh, Jordan Farm down off Broad Cove. Something that's wide enough that the, that the fire chief and the police chief would approve to bring in here and we could do a temporary gate with a couple of posts and a chain. So that if this did ever happen that you couldn't get in this end, they could, like it is in the end, go that way. I would have no problem with that because that would save a ton of infrastructure underground sure. Sure. here and make it safe, doable, and I think it's a win-win for the town. No, it's and that's, I, I have no problem with that, and that's something that, as a condition of approval, if that's how it goes, um, Ost and myself and the, the public works director could come up with a added bond amount to the... This is a known quantity already because it's out there. Um, we could add the gravel sure. infrastructure. No, I, know, I know exactly what you're saying. And this is all on. It's into here. We had to bring in logging trucks in here to get all the blowdowns in here out. So it's really into almost here now. Oh, I see. It's a gravel road. Yeah, and then a bunch more trees came down in the, in the uh, storm the other night. So it, it, it's really, we would only have to do. A small amount. So, so if, you, if you wait long enough, nature may do the, the clearing for you. So I, I agree. I saw the way that was going from the back of the room. Yeah, I, I have no problem with the phasing. I mean, I understand completely why you want to phase this yep. project. But I think that safety, we need to deal with both sides. Of it. Oh, absolutely. We could I think that's a fine Their answer. offer seems completely fair. Okay. I mean, I don't... Unless anyone else wants to add anything, I see Elaine writing furiously because she's going to make the motion, I can yeah. tell. I just wanted to add something. I'm really sympathetic with your point um, about Hamlin Street. I live in a really tight neighborhood where egress and ingress from Shore Road is not two ways, but we have multiple accesses out of our neighborhood. And without it, I would not be happy. And um, that the bigger safety issue is not Chicory Way, right. I don't think. It's getting South Street connected to Spurwick, but I don't think um, it's a political reality to get the town to buy that. Right. So I would encourage some private solution to do that, but I think that would make a huge quality of life difference. But, Liza, to, to, to my memory, neighborhood. to my memory, is the developer tried? To, yes, to, he did. He did try. I, I just want to say to the two speakers. And Susan, uh, I agree with you. It, it, this wasn't my first choice or my fifth choice or my eighth choice. We wanted I, I, ways I, in, and we were derailed. Uh, you know. So okay. So I yeah, just want to respond to that. All right. So any other questions, <laughs> comments, thoughts, or suggestions from the board members before I invite motions? I guess I'm. Busily trying to take, take write, write the condition here, but my question is, and I'd be interested in Maureen and other people's thoughts, is it appropriate to do a motion which is conditioned on the construction of a gravel access way adequate for fire trucks, or is it more appropriate that we table this application and request that the applicant come back to our next meeting with an actual plan for that road? the fire chief has had a chance to look at and says, yes, this graveled access way is adequate for my fire trucks. Um, yep. no, that's I, my question. Let me ask the developer a quick question. Is, is doing that kicking in over a month with that going to slow you up in a dramatic way? <laughs> you, you know, I, I actually would feel more comfortable with that too, but if there's a major reason you're ready to take the bond out tomorrow or whatever else, you need to move along. There's, there's nothing crucial. No. Okay, that's fair. So my thought would be, with the, de with the developer's permission to table this, uh, to consider a motion to table it. And, uh, but I would ask for something very specific tonight, not just come back. I, I think what we're looking for, and maybe you can summarize, is some sort of plan showing a, a gravel build out of that. Is that what you need? We want to run it by the. the yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, you know, any suggestions, Maureen? Hold on, Barbara, just a sec. No. Uh, or maybe you don't want to do this at all, Barbara. No, I, when I'm, no I, I'm perfectly happy with the solution, but I'm wondering if, if, if it's, if the applicant, or the applicant, the, the request for, you know, the phasing and, and having the dirt road, that we just have the condition uh, that the dirt road to meet the, um, 
the fire chief and the um, police chief. Hmm? Police chief. And the police chief's approval is not sufficient. That we don't really need a whole big plan to come back to. I mean, the road is in here. We have the area of the road anyway, and they're going to put in a gravel road where the road is. That, that seems fairly specific to me, Thank and you. not have them wait another month. Okay. I mean, I'm trying to balance between what's fair and what's safe. And No, it's a fair point, because I don't want them to put a plan together that isn't going to show us any more than we already have. Well, I mean, I think I see where the road needs to go, and it's going to be dirt. It's not going to have any infrastructure underneath it. It's not going to have any utilities. It's just going to be a gravel road shown exactly where the road is. Right. I think, is it it's on the plan. It's really called private. It would be built private same, access way. It would be built to the same standard, which is your 12 inches of gravel. With, with yeah, I, I'm perfectly gravel. happy to have them do it just where it is. It is an easy standard to even say that because mm -hmm. that's what your basic private, private access, access way is built to, and those are dirt roads. Can you, and that's what the can you tell me that that standard of private uh, private access way? Private access way with 12 inches of gravel? I think it's 12 inches of uh, de gravel. Well, and, uh, Elaine, we have that in our standards. Okay, so and the standard, what we call it, is it to build to the standard of an emergency access road? No, no. Yes. Emergency gravel? access road? She, the, the standards are already in the ordinance if you use that term. Emergency access road, yes. Okay. And if that is done, is it appropriate for that to be run by the police chief or the fire chief? Well, it's going to be done to where it's shown on the plan already, which has already been approved. So my view is just tie it to the plan, give them a standard to build it to, and I'm not sure what they're going to tell us about approval because we've already approved it. Right. Where it is, Elaine. And this would be completed before construction of any residences on any of the lots. Do we need to say that? Skip. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, when we, when we come across in here, um, you know, uh, there's the potential to actually maybe dig a hole in lot five, but when we come across into this area here, Skip will just keep... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with, when, the, when the big equipment is there, we're certainly going to utilize it. I'll do it once for the construction, and the, inf the infrastructure will stop at the phase. And with okay, the camera and, on, yeah, I got the that one too. That's going to be the no. That's going to be the first one. Okay. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Spurwink Woods LLC for an amendment to the previously approved Cottage Brook subdivision to revise the phasing plan to create smaller phases. Um, be approved subject to the following conditions. Condition one, that the boundary line of phase two be revised to include the um, turnaround area that is adjacent to Chicory Way. And condition number two, that that the boundary line of phase three, I'm sorry, not phase two in that last one. And condition number two, that phase two shall include the construction of a graveled access way along South Street to the intersection of Chicory Way. No, no, no. No, and along Chicory Way and continuing along Chicory Way to the gated intersection with Kildeer Road to be constructed in accordance with the standards for an initial cap emergency access road. Is that described correctly? And I think that's it. I'm sorry. I, you were right. Okay. I was just trying to describe that, that turn. <laughs> that's what I was trying to figure out. Did you get that, Maureen? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you want the turnaround as part of the Chicory Way? Well, the, uh, when, the turnaround when, is part of Chicory yeah. Way. Okay. Is it? Yeah, it's not part, well, of, it's not part of Lot 11. Right. Well, the, the right. first... Or is, is it, it part of this gravel? Yes. Easement. Okay. Yes. You want to read that back? <laughs> <laughs> or you want me to say it again? No, it's on the record. It's That's on the record. Fine. Okay. It's All right. And emergency access road is a defined term? Yes. Okay. I didn't see it. All right. 
A motion having been made. Do I have a second? Second. Caroline seconded the motion. Uh, before I have any discussion, there was one audience member that wanted to make a comment. But, no, thank you. I just want to make sure that... No, yeah, you have to step up and just restate your name so we can have a clear record. My question is... Just no, right up to the podium. That's where the camera focus is, so... All right. Alice Berman, Fort Macaulay Road. So this gravel roads, can you take a fire truck down it if it's snowy, rainy? Is it going to be plowed by the town? It will be plowed by the developer. All, I'm sorry? By, plowed by the developer during the project point. until the town accepts it as a road, okay. which is the standard subdivision practice and by ordinance. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, motion having been made and seconded. Any discussion by the board on the motion? Having heard none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. That was a consent sign. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the Inn by the Sea. 600 cottages site plan amendment. The Inn by the Sea is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for Inn by the Sea, located at 40 Bowery Beach Road, to demolish the 600 cottages and build a new building for 10 hotel units under Section 19-9 site plan amendment. If the developer or their representative can step up to the microphone, introduce themselves, and present their application, the board will consider it. You get slugged. specifically what we call the 600 cottage, which is in the southeast portion of the lot, um, consisting of currently six two-bedroom units. And we would like to demolish the building, rebuild with um, uh, eight one-bedroom units and two two-bedroom units. Uh, we uh, are looking to build because the existing building is, in, is coming into a state of disrepair. It takes uh, considerable maintenance costs every year to get it ready for uh, use. It's currently it's closed during the winter months and then reopened each spring. And um, it, it's not an efficient building to maintain. We'd like to build a very sustainable structure on the existing site and uh, provide a better revenue potential for the, for the inn Currently, that, that building doesn't match the feel of finishes of the renovation we did in 2007. And uh, we have an opportunity to really make some improvements to the, to the space. 
Um, that's a general introduction. I'm going to hand over to Steve Bradstreet to talk about the site plan and review the application. And we also have Mark Burns available for questions if there's any questions about architectural detail. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question, though, because your introduction implied you're just looking for completeness tonight. Is that a modification for what's, from what we had in front of us from before? Yeah, thank you for asking the question, Peter. Um, during, uh, we've had several meetings with, with the town, and uh, obviously we've had the review from AMEC, and some issues have come up that need um, some small modifications to the design of the building, and so at this stage we'd like to request for a review for completeness. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Incompleteness only, right? Incompleteness only tonight. Correct. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Bradstreet with Oak Engineers. Um, the, the plan that's behind me or up on the wall um, indicates that the existing building, which is outlined, uh, it, it's high to see, but uh, in the cross hatching on my plan, anyways, is the existing building that will be demoed, foundation removed, and a new building. Uh, with a full basement um, constructed in this location. It generally does not change any of the other site uh, amenities. We are removing all the sidewalks uh, out in that area. We're actually reducing the total sidewalk area by 211 square feet, so the impervious area changes. Uh, those walkways out there are bituminous. They're painted bituminous. Uh, we are looking to put in concrete pavers similar to what we have already done on the previous 2007 project all along the um, front property line. So the actual uh, impervious area uh, decreases. We have shown on the plan uh, the area for the wedding tent, the service tent. Um, the wedding tent was in the uh, previous approval, but it gives you an idea of where that tent goes and, and the access points to it. The, uh, all the utilities uh, remain the same coming to the building. The sewer, there's water, there's underground electric. Um, the one change that we're looking for is in the back of the building, between the building and the parking lot, there's two underground storage tanks that we've shown in this location. Uh, that would be uh, for uh, providing service to the 600 cottage. Um, the thing that we'd like to uh, show and is better shown on the landscaping plan is the intensity of what we're trying to do to provide a boulevard walkway from the main inn out to the wedding area with uh, trees on both sides, a lot of understory planting on both sides. And then uh, also around the building itself, um, each of the units out front have their own patio, have a lawn area. Uh, there is a uh, stone wall out there. It's not a retaining wall, it's a stone wall. That gives them sort of a private front yard um, so that when they come out, they feel like they have something uh, of their own property there. There were some comments uh, uh, from uh, AMEC, and uh, all of those have been addressed on my plans. Uh, there were some additional uh, plans not in your package, but what's hanging be behind me. Uh, so all of those have been taken care of. Uh, they were primarily graphical uh, type changes on the plans. So the only thing that we're working now uh, on is with uh, specific elements in regards to um, the architecture and comments from uh, Bruce Smith. And those we have, we feel we have under control, and, uh, and we'll have that uh, presented to you at the uh, next meeting. So with that, I'd like to end my talk and <laughs> a answer your questions. Actually, the question I have is, based on those discussions, are you anticipating we're going to get another package like this between now and the next meeting, or, or is that fairly still up in the air? Uh, no, it, it, you would, because my plans behind me have all the changes made. Uh, the architect's uh, plans will have those changes, so we would have to resubmit those. Okay. But everything else uh, for completeness is in there. We have uh, met all the requirements of the submission. Everything is in there. 
we are just now addressing some minor comments um, from the town. Okay. So you anticipate whatever changes are made will not be s substantially different than... No, okay. not at all. All right. Um, so the applicant's done their presentation. Is it, you all set? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I'm a little uncertain on where we stand with the building volume calculations because if I read what we have from Bruce Smith and what we have from you, there's some significant differences which seem to me could make some significant changes in the plans, not minor changes in the plans. So if you could address that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. With that, I'll, I'll let uh, Mark Burns, the architect, address about the volume uh, calculations. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Mark Burns, for Center Architects. Uh, yes, there were some calculations which, uh, which had included uh, the existing decks uh, in order to, at, at first, determine what the existing volume is in order to determine what the allowable volume would be. We had included decks in that and um, met with Bruce. Uh, we recalculated, took those decks out, and it had, a, had an effect on the total volume of the building. Uh, and to give you a magnitude of about 9,000 cubic feet. And uh, to let you know where we're going with this and what the magnitude of the change would be is that uh, we've taken the entrances of the building, this portion here, and pulled it into the building. It's a three-story move. And we have uh, taken this portion of the building off, which was a service um, addition, single story with a sloped roof. And um, what that does for us is it brings us in with an allowable cubic footage of about 91,463. And we now have a volume of 91,197. So we've actually taken 9,000 cubic feet off of the building, approximately 1,300 or 1,235 uh, cubic, uh, square feet. And um, clearly, we're, we're well within that. What this will do in the next presentation is, uh, and I know there's been some concerns about how the building is volumetrically very rectilinear and it doesn't show a lot of relief um, but we were in the beginning uh, understanding that we could always make the square footage the question was would we make the volume and so what we did was now uh, we had pulled out the decks and the decks actually help in terms of reducing the volume, but they also don't factor into the volume when we add them in. So what we're going to do now is add in approximately 670 or so square feet of deck, which will then give that relief to the exterior of the building. It's very specific as to how that uh, how that uh, computation is arrived at. And uh, we did sit down with Bruce. We talked about the very de details of that computation. Uh, I have calculated that. I will meet with Bruce again this week. And, um, and then we'll present plans to him along with the elevations. And um, we'll satisfy Bruce. I guess my, my response to you, my initial sense is that what we have in front of us then is for our review is not what you're proposing to do and it seems to me that I would be more inclined to move the entire process forward rescheduling both completeness and the next step for a month from now because as far as I'm concerned I don't have in front of me what you're proposing so I can't determine whether or not it's complete 
on, on the crucial issue in the on, case. On some of the crucial, one of the crucial issues, which is volume, and it seems to me that all of the um, drawings of the building, all of the elevations are no longer accurate. Or, or, or not what they're proposing. Are, they're, they, are not, they are not what you are currently proposing. That's A correct. Actually, they, um, as, as far as the completeness, they are. However, the, um, the presentation is far, we're not asking for an approval. We're simply asking for the completeness of the package. And but that, if the package but, doesn't depict the proposed project, well, that is, to me that's it's because not. it's part of the process with which we're working with yeah, I'm, staff. I'm, I'm, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't engage in a debate until we've heard from all no, the people. No, I don't, I don't no, no. need to debate it. Yeah. I'm just simply stating just that, and if Maureen would like to uh, chime in, I'm sorry to put you in the spot. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's hear from the other planning board members first. I, either Liza and Barbara yeah. had your hands up. So I did a fair amount of calculation myself, and I also um, read the ordinance really um, closely. And my main concern actually is square footage, floor area, not volume. Um, so I was curious to know, with the proposed plan, how much square footage um, are you proposing? It's called floor area, is the defined term in the ordinance. We are... Previous to tonight, mm -hmm. the package that you're looking at yep. actually has an area total of 10,201 as an allowable. Yeah. Hey, Liza. That's my point. I, I just, it's not I, that number no, that's I have, allowable. I, I have a caution right now because yeah. I don't think we want to engage in substantive reviewing it because they're okay. telling what I'm hearing is they're going to submit something slightly okay. different. I just, all right, so. Um, and, and right now, uh -huh. the, what you're looking at, I'm allowed to increase by 25%, and I am presently at 25.47. Okay. Um, in the package that you have. So how, how, without reviewing, how could I caution to read very narrowly the ordinance about how floor area is calculated? Well, I, I know, I know um, the in this specific is, type of so, zone. Go ahead, Maureen, do you want to? Sure, sure. Um, the applicant met with Bruce um, mm -hmm. yesterday. I was in there for part of the meeting. And uh, the agreement was that the applicant, I mean, Ideally, what, sh what would have happened, because the non-conforming buildings are a lot more tricky. They're right. just a lot more complex by their nature. Uh, most buildings, as long as you meet setbacks and, and you generally you know, do things right, you're okay. But um, you know, how you calculate 10 square feet can have a lot of impact on a non-conforming building. So ideally, if the applicant had had more time, they could have calculated everything, scheduled a meeting with Bruce, sat down, agreed to, that this is the magic number of what you have right now, and then you can up it by 25%. Um, that didn't happen. Right. Um, so what was agreed to yesterday is that um, the applicant had included uh, some areas that exist right now that would not be allowed. And the code officer generally described those. The agreement is that the applicant is going to come in with a brand new calculation. Mm -hmm. and say, okay, I've deleted everything I think you told me I cannot count. Is this the right number? Yeah. And then, if they can come to that agreement, then the applicant starts from there to add 25%. So, but the thing is, you know, what number you have right now, and then your plus 25% mm -hmm. is really a, a determination of compliance with the zoning ordinance, which, which is could, our job to which determine. Which actually, which is yeah. the code enforcement officer's job. He either says. You're complying with this or you're not complying with it. And if someone doesn't agree with yeah. his determination, the pr process is to appeal his determination to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the Planning Board's job is to apply the site plan standards. And the site plan standards don't talk about verifying compliance with resource protection districts. So, I mean, if the applicant come back, comes back next month and, and you are concerned that what they're proposing does not comply with the Resource Protection District, the appropriate response 
would be to, again, go to the code officer and say, please explain why you think this is consistent with the zoning ordinance. And if you don't agree with the code officer, then we're in an extremely unpleasant situation of considering an appeal of his decision to the zoning board, which we really don't want to do if we can avoid it. But I would... I mean, there yeah. is an opportunity to, your to, to let the code enforcement up how, how okay. you're reading I mean, I'm not going to go out there with the tape measure. That's his job. But, but his job is not um, If I have given a set of measurements for existing floor area and I have a calculator and the plans have proposed floor area, I'm going to vote against it if it doesn't meet those criteria. Sure. I, I, and I, again, I mean, the board asked me to forward your concerns to the code officer, and I did so, and I'm more than happy to continue to do that as many times as you want me to. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you another question, Maureen? Is, Absolutely. Has it been the practice of the planning board in the past when we are told fairly directly that plans submitted to us do not comply with the zoning ordinance to not to give the applicant the opportunity to correct that before we move forward with our consideration because it seems to me that that's what we're being told that well, this volume does not comply with the zoning ordinance standards right and i i think uh what the board can do is you can look at the magnitude of non-compliance it's very typical for someone to prepare an application to show you something and then to determine that, uh, gee, they're, they're, they're a foot and a half too close on the setback, you better go back and fix that. Or um, you, you might be, you know, a few percentage points over your pervious surface coverage. You need, we actually had a situation, and I'm coming back to me now, with the, um, Oh, the, the Alzheimer's unit on Scott Dyer Road where they oh, had presented a site plan and it became obvious that they had <coughs> proposed some new small additions within the 250 foot buffer and they were told you need to take those out and they came back the following month and did that. It was not a specific you can't move forward. If an applicant were to propose something that on its face was not a permitted use uh, it should never even make it to the board. Right. Um, so this is something where the board can make a determination that you look at your site plan standards. Have they submitted information on right title or interest, on uh, property line boundaries, on the septic system, on the parking lot? Uh, and if you feel that they've provided enough information to be complete, and complete does not equate to adequate, then you could consider completeness. If, however, you are tremendously concerned that there's no way they can even go forward to meet these zoning restrictions and that they have a woefully inadequate application, you certainly can deem it incomplete tonight. But you really should be identifying things, things from the site plan submission requirements that are missing from the application. For what it's worth. Yes, if, quick. If Barbara? Yeah, I, I have a question and a comment. I, I don't feel so concerned about going ahead with completeness because I, I, we very often go on for a long time about changes we want to have made in things over several months with some larger projects. And it seems to me they've given us almost everything we need, even though the plans have to be changed at this point. We're going to consider them next month. And you're going to work very carefully with Bruce and with Maureen and make sure that the volume and the square footage is accurate. I commend you, because I wouldn't even begin to know how to go ahead with that. Um, <laughs> um, but I do have a question, and it's in relation to uh, you're taking out the service area and that little extension behind which the air conditioner units were to go. And when we went on the site walk, we were told that it would make much, it would be much more muted than it is now, and there was concern from the neighbors next door about the noise. Where are those units going to go now? Hey, Barbara, I think that's subs we're subsidy reviewing this, and we haven't determined. Oh, okay. Never mind. No, I'll wait. Yeah, just so, write it down. I'll wait. <laughs> 
have another vote, you can then ask a question. Okay. I just okay. want to say I'm okay with going ahead with completeness, but I think it's at the applicant's risk then that we don't pass the you know, um, Me, meaning, amended plan. You're saying oh, determine it complete. Yes. If you don't mind me responding to that, yeah. I just want to say, you know, with respect, you know, we came tonight to be forthcoming with information, mm -hmm. and we also presented, uh, have a plan to present, mm -hmm. which reflects a square footage change, and this will be presented to Bruce, and the square footage change is 3,203 square feet per floor. So clearly, you know, clearly at 9,600 or so, we're below that 10,200 yeah. <laughs> threshold. Just to give you confidence that that's the way we're working with it, and um, uh, you know, I just don't want you to think that that we're we're trying to push something through. Yeah. I would just read the ordinance it. carefully on whether you can include the decks on the floor area. But and, they're not. And we're not. And that's not. what we're telling you is that we. They're not. They're not. They're that's, what, okay. that's why we've recalculated this is because we actually found that the, that the existing building uh -huh. is as much as 9,000 cubic feet less when I take out the decks. Yeah. And so therefore we took it out of the building to reflect the proposed building to reflect that. Yeah. On this page I have it saying that the floor area minus the decks is 6299 square feet existing. Right. So when I multiply that by 1.25, I get 7800 square feet. Right, but some of the decks have different dimensions. And some areas are even, if you remember at one end of the building, it had that round portion, uh -huh. much taller as well. And we've calculated this, this whole thing with a model and, um, and a computer. So we, we've really done you know, taking it to the nth degree so that we know what we're looking at. Okay, I was using your, the numbers provided. Yeah, I understand, yes. And it's, the new presentation will be clearer. Okay. Oh, it's, Peter? It's one, of, it's one of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just sorry. a clarification for me, um, decks are included in, in pervious areas. The decks should be included? Yes. Wait, yeah. What the app, again, non-conforming structures, very complicated. The applicant has to comply with the our residence A district standards. They have to comply with shoreland zoning, which tends to be the heavy hitter on impervious surface. And they also have to comply with the RP1 buffer, which tends to be the very heavy hitter on expansion. So they're, they've got three hoops to jump through. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my own suggestion is I couldn't find, I saw the existing building impervious area and I turned the page to look for um, allowable because I believe you cannot expand that, you can't increase that number. You can't increase impervious area? Um, there, the impervious surface is under two different standards. Impervious surface usually includes some kind of building. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting a building there, that's hitting your your, your buffer, your wetland buffer, 25% maximum. If you're just putting in a surface area, then you do need to look at your shoreland zoning and 20% uh, maximum coverage. I believe, and again, we're gonna have to look at all again, but I believe uh, Mr. Bradstreet was kind of the impervious surface guru, and that's why you'll see some of the walkways are being taken out. Um, the bocce court is being taken out, not being replaced. So there is an opportunity if you have impervious surface and you remove it, you can kind of get a credit for it and put it someplace else. Okay, because I saw it on the existing. It just, um, discussed the building impervious area. And when I turned the page to compare all the numbers, I couldn't find it because I was looking for the, if it could just that's, be. That's because it's not a comparison within the building. What we're trying to do is look at the building component and then it's an aggregate of the total project components, which means that you're taking the building impervious, mm -hmm. adding it with the site impervious, and in the site documents, you'll find a total impervious and what the comparison is. We've factored the building into the site model in order to come up with what the proposed is versus what the existing is. Okay, I was just looking for those numbers. But my assumption is that when the applicant resubmits next month, there's going to be a really great cover letter that's going to lay all this out. <laughs> you will get it. Go ahead. 
Am I incorrect in my understanding? I'm looking at the submission checklist, and I don't see anything here that says to me that we can't improve completeness, even though the plan is going under revision. Am I correct in that, or am I no, misunderstanding? That's, that's, that's the General. board's call. I prepare that checklist, and it's, it's my assessment of the plan. You don't have to take <coughs> advice, but right now I'm, I'm not finding anything incomplete. There are, there, I think there was one waiver that was being requested. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's information the board can use or discard. And we can handle it several ways, which is to put the motion, whatever motions happen to come across the chair's desk. Is that a hint? <laughs> well, or in terms of either tabling or we can put the completeness out there, take a vote on it. Um, and the, yeah, so those are the only two options, I think, because the applicant is telling us they're not even asking us to consider substantive review tonight anyway. So um, I, if any other questions or comments, thoughts, or suggestions, and if there are <coughs> I would invite motions. Okay. I'll read it. Okay. <laughs> Motion for consideration. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of in by the CLLC located at 40 Bowery Beach Road to demolish and rebuild the 600 cottage be deemed complete. Uh, you said complete. Complete. Okay. Second. Okay. So a motion having been made by Carol and, the, and um, Jordan and the, uh, seconded by Barbara Schenkel, I... Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion? Motion carries four to two. Thank you very much. So I just wanted oh, to we, say we now that we're under review. Oh, go ahead. You know, I don't Sorry. think that the design <laughs> is in keeping with the aesthetics of the main building. It has a real feel of volume maximization. And I'm going to be looking very carefully at um, those numbers to make sure that it's in keeping with that. And I would love to see more of a roof line that mirrors the roof line or mimics the roof line of the main hotel. Okay. Can I add one more? Come well, I'm, I'm just trying to make, um, make sure procedurally we've covered everything. Okay. Because uh, are we, do we need to table officially the consideration of of the approval motion? What you've done is you've deemed it complete. Right. And you you scheduled a public hearing for this evening, so you should really hold the public hearing in case anyone would like to That's speak. That's right, because we noticed Mike. that. And then after you hold the public hearing, you should ask any questions that you want to ask. If you want to tell the applicant, we really are looking for X and Y for next month, now's the time to tell the applicant that. All those substantive questions you've been holding until now, now's your chance. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's okay. And, no. and then at the end, what I would recommend you do is you table the application to sure. the December 21st meeting. I would also recommend that you table it with a public hearing to be scheduled at yeah. that meeting because you are expecting changes to be made to the plan and you might as well let the public speak on those changes as well. Okay. So do I so, open so, the public? Yeah. Yeah. But Elaine, did you want to? Well, let me, let me open the public. Let the public speak. Anyone wishing to speak concerning the application of in by the sea? Oh, we do. But we will be taking public comment at the next one as well. I am Diane Nebu, live at 32 Bowery Beach Road, right adjoining the inn. We've been good neighbors. Uh, obviously, we have some concerns. Um, we have not been communicated with by the uh, folks from the inn, and um, we are getting on board, basically, here tonight. Um, well, you have another month to, to learn more. We will be tuned in, and uh, obviously we do have concerns about the noise level of the air conditioning. The sight lines will concern us as well. and. Um, Hopefully we can uh, continue speaking about these matters and uh, be uh, plugged into the discussions. And uh, thank you for letting me speak up here tonight. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in December. Yes. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the by the sea application? I'm Howard Heller. I uh, own a building and 
Richmond Terrace and am within sight of uh, this proposal. I'm concerned about many aspects of it and I feel that I am unable to respond to any of them with these few plans. Now I know you have a folder, but we don't. And I think the public is entitled when you have the next public hearing to see more of what the proposals are. We're concerned about the aesthetics of the joining of the uh, architecture with what's already there. We are concerned about the noise level. And we also want to know a little more about how the water and sewage will be handled. I know that there were approvals before for what was there, but we need a different situation now for winter use, and we'd like to know more about that too. Sure. Uh, I, I think it's a very interesting project. I'm not in any way against it at this point, but I'm in no way for it at this point either. I need to know more. And I think that all of the people from that area are entitled to know more. Sure. Uh, sir, if I could just make two comments. First of all, the, the public generally doesn't get disseminated copies of the whole project plans. I didn't expect Sure, but, you, but you're more than welcome to come to the uh, planning office, call Maureen, and you can come take a look I at the... I called and asked, and of course there was nothing. That, this came in a lot of it today. Sure, fair. And uh, I think the public needs time sure. to be able to come in. I'm happy to come in. It's very easy to... And that's why we're, we're going to hear it again uh, in December. But the, my, my second comment was the concerns you had about, I think, water and sewer will be part of our consideration when we bring I it up. I know it's part of your consideration. Okay. Uh, I think our reaction to it, because it may affect adjacent properties, sure. is extremely important, I think. Oh, but I have a question. Um, you said something about winter use. Could yes. you elaborate on that? The winter use for water and sewer, does that change in the winter? Uh, it's my understanding that part of the replacement of these units is to put in units that could be used year round. And I'm wrong, but I don't know. You're right. I didn't realize they were not currently used in the winter. So yeah. thank you. No, you're right. It makes a big difference between winter and uh, year round use. I have been a realtor, I am involved in real estate enough to know the problems. Uh, between the two. Thank you. Thank you. Just one comment. Mr. Heller, the information on water and sewer is already on file in the office. So Anything. come by anytime. Yeah, I will come in and look Great. at it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the application of in by the sea? Anyone else wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing for tonight. And um, Questions from board members? I think we've made all our <laughs> substantive comments already. And frankly, and frankly, I want to see the new plans, but go ahead before no, I... I just wondered about the air conditioning units because there was a question about that. Now that side building is going to be gone, so I think you need to talk about where... You don't need to do it right this moment, but where those units are going to be and what the noise level compared to the current noise level is going to be because we were told it was going to be substantially less. But now there's no buffer there with that building. So I'm not sure where they're going to go. So you need to show that on the plans, please. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions, something else? Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention is um, one of the things mentioned in the town engineer's letter refers to Albert Frick's concern about the uh, grease trap that needs to become part of this project. And I was kind of concerned to see in your materials that this issue was brought to your attention in January of 2010, and it's still here we are in November of 2010, and this um, septic system issue still hasn't been resolved, and I find that a little bit troubling. Can I? Sure. Can I speak to that? Um, if I can respond to that a little bit. It, uh, it is an outstanding issue, and the biggest challenge with that issue is that, um, speaking to Rodney Coleman, who I contacted to do the work, we need to take the entire septic system offline to do the work. And so the challenge has been to find a window of opportunity where the hotel is virtually empty, 
but yet we can do site work. Um, and that, that has been our challenge. And unfortunately, business has been very, very good. Uh, so, uh, but we have committed to Bruce and Smith and to Alfred that we will get that done this fall. I'm hoping we'll have it done by the time I come and see you in December. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions? Nope. Sure. Um, I was hoping, Steve, if you could point something out. I had a question this afternoon, and I wanted to make sure I had read the plan. Yep, it's okay. Um, correctly, if you could point out on, um, I think it's the north corner closest to the water, the, the corner of the existing building and the corner of the proposed building, basically in the same place. The uh, existing building? And I, yeah, the other side. The north side. The north side on the water. You, that's the good place. Yeah, move your hand down to the other corner. This one? Right there. Right there. Okay. Uh, the existing building is out here. Okay. The proposed building is in here. That's what I thought. It's farther away from the water. So, in, in fact, if you're worried about a sight line, the building actually is going to pull back a little. That is correct. Okay. And, and just to note on this side, it's the same. We are farther away from the water. Okay. We're actually behind the setback line, whereas the existing building is not. Thank you. But that's the site line. This way? That's right. And this, the Bowery Beach is over here? Yep. There's a lot of lines. I just wanted to make sure no, I read I it correctly because a, um, a resident had asked the question. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? So we need a motion to table and set a public hearing on December 21st. Carolyn, it's not going to be in the material. Someone's going to have to wing it. I'll make a motion. Sure. Yeah. Do we have to do the based on plans and materials? You should, yes. OK. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of In by the Sea LLC located at 40 Bowery Beach Road to demolish and rebuild the 600 cottage be tabled until the December planning board meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. I'm sorry, a motion having been made by Elaine and seconded by who I didn't hear who say. Oh, Barbara. Or whomever. <laughs> uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you in December. Peter, can I ask just a procedural question? Uh, I will also ask Maureen to help me answer it. <laughs> um, I spent most of my summer, in fact, almost all my summer vacation reading the ordinance from cover to cover. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Wow. Thank you for that, Mark, for, for writing it. Um, I had something not as nice. <laughs> am I able to discuss with Liza offline, no. address any of her concerns? I feel very confident that we, we have a really good understanding. It's, it's a pending application. I can, I can, we can both answer that one. That, that's, an abs no. that's an absolute, but... I uh, invite you to bring those discussions to the December meeting yeah. because, among other reasons, that's the rule, is it might enlighten some of us uh, to, to have it, you know, to uh, hear that as well. Okay. Sure. That's kind of the point. It's, it's the state right to know law. That would be considered an ex parte communication. Yeah. That's why I asked the question. Appreciate you, for, uh, appreciate you asking okay. first. Right. Well, we're not bringing it. You want to do that? Mr. Zimmerman, yeah. there, a suggestion has been made. I was, I was just wondering if you would like some feedback and an opportunity to dialogue on that before the December planning board meeting. The workshop is a public forum that would provide an opportunity to do that. And that's in two weeks? Right. Okay. I mean, large or complicated projects sometimes come back for multiple workshops. Okay. Sometimes you have a specific issue that you want to make sure you're heading in the right direction. Okay. The workshop is uh, December 7th, and uh, we would just need to know a week before that meeting if you want it to be on. Okay. Well, let me chat with my colleagues, and we'll let you know by December 7th. Great. Are you going to be at that workshop? A week before. Okay.
The week before, yeah. We'll, we'll let you know in the next couple of days. All right. All set? All set. Thank you very much, everyone. Next item on the agenda. <laughs> 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 it's all on tape. The, um, the rooster amendments, which is set for public hearing. I'll read it for the record. The town council has referred to the planning board a request to consider amendments to regulate roosters, section 19-10-23 of the zoning amendments. Uh, do we, have, we don't have a presentation from an applicant, so I guess... Uh, what, what, what you need to do tonight is you need to make sure that you are satisfied with this text and send it for a public hearing next month. Oh, so we're not, tonight is a tonight. public hearing. Would you like me to summarize? The, sure. Okay, <laughs> so what you have in front of you are amendments to the RA, the RB, and the RC districts that would require that um, you would need a minimum lot size of 40,000 square feet, which is just under an acre, in order to keep a rooster. So I'd like to make a motion. Go for it. Um, motion for the, all right. Be it ordered that the draft rooster amendments to the zoning ordinance to, um, to the zoning ordinance to be tabled to the December 21st, 2010 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. I second that. A motion having been made and seconded. And all in favor of the motion? All opposed? So do we need a formal? Yeah, we Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. as you say. I'm just trying to move it along. Can the, you have that sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> it's a public hearing. <laughs> um, so we just need a motion to adjourn, and then we're going to reconvene in a work session, unless the board wants to do it here. My preference, my preference would be to do it in the conference room. But yeah. motion to adjourn. So All in favor? <laughs> okay. I'm just going to take a five minute break, and then we'll start up. Oh. Carol, are you second that?